Hello folks, welcome to our channel. Today we are going to see how to create a DynamoDB event stream processor. What it means is, think of a scenario where you have an enterprise and there is a new employee that is added to the enterprise and you want to add an employee into the DynamoDB table and you want to trigger some downstream business process. For example, you need to trigger the laptop process, you want to trigger the badge process, you want to trigger the desk process, you want to trigger the access management and all those kind of profiles that you need to associate with that user profile. So whenever there is an insert item or a put item into the DynamoDB, you want to do some actions and we are going to trigger the Lambda function here. So in this use case, we are specifically going to do it for put items, but you can do it for delete items or modify items or any other events that are, you are interested in your DynamoDB. I have wrapped all of these things into a CloudFormation script, which is going to create the DynamoDB for us, which is also going to create a Lambda function and create the streams and create a trigger function also. And I have wrapped them all together into a helper script, which will help us to deploy this cloud formation script very easily. Let us go to our GitHub article and see how we can do this in our own accounts. This is the article that we are going to follow today and the link will be in the description so that you can go ahead and follow with me. Go ahead and like them, star them or fork if you are going to make some changes, send me a pull request also. So one of the primary prerequisites is having an AWS CLI configured, which will allow you to create a DynamoDB table and Lambda functions and the necessary roles. And then we are going to clone this repository, make some changes to the environment files, for example, which S3 bucket you want to upload the code into, or if you want to change the service name or the stack name, go ahead and modify them. Then we are going to change the permissions of the script and run them through. So the bucket that I'm going to use is a SAM template 001 or 011. If you have another bucket, you need to update this bucket name into the script. And as of now, we don't have any cloud formation scripts here or cloud formation stacks here. And there is one table, let us ignore that for a moment, we'll be creating a new table and adding items to it. Likewise, there are no Lambda functions configured in my account right now. So let us go ahead and clone this repository locally. So first I'm going to add the execute permissions for those files. We can go ahead and modify them after that. I'll show you where we need to modify the files, where you need to upload or change the bucket name here. So. Once in the VI or in your favorite editor, you can see here the bucket name here. And if you want to change the stack name, you can go ahead and read through the script if you're interested. If not, that's all the only changes that you need to do and save them. And let us run that file now. So what it's going to do is it is going to package my cloud formation script into an YAML file and upload the entire code into my S3 bucket. You can see here, this is the S3 bucket is going to upload. And once the upload is completed, it is going to create a cloud formation stack and trigger all the events there. So let us go to our console and see what is happening there. So this is the bucket. If I go and refresh my screen, you can see here the entire stack code and the necessary information is packaged into a blob and uploaded here. And if I go to my cloud formation, refresh screen, you can see a DynamoDB stream processor has been triggered and go to my events. You can see here there is a stream processor uh, stream is created, DynamoDB table is created and the Lambda functions. So let us go to our DynamoDB console refresh and you can see there is a new table and under the table you can see your streams have been enabled and it has been enabled for new and old images and this is the most important part triggers you can see here there's a trigger configured if you want to know how to do it manually this is the place where you go ahead and create it you just go ahead and see you want to use the existing function or create a new function so in our case the function has been created let us click on this and see where it takes us you can see here it's automatically tagged to the DynamoDB table as a trigger function and uh, you have the necessary code is also uploaded. So what we are going to do now is as of now there are no items in our table. I'm going to add an item and see if my Lambda function is getting triggered. So go ahead and click on create item and change it to text. Timestamp for now I'm just going to have a simple value so that is easy. In a short while we'll run a bash script and trigger a lot of items into our bucket and see if my Lambda function is getting triggered. So if I go back to my Lambda function, let me close this one and go to my monitoring section. In a short while, I should be getting a small dot getting the invocation. So it will take a few seconds because the DynamoDB is going to put the item into the event stream and that event stream is going to trigger my Lambda function. Let us refresh one more time. You can see here there's one invocation and I'm going to check in my Lambda logs to see whether the event that item that we put in is being reflected here. So this is the one I'm interested in. You can see here it is mystique and timestamp. So what I'm going to do is I want to check whether it is scaling for as many events that I'm inserting so that my Lambda function is also triggered. So this is a quick script. 
all you need to do is go ahead and change your DynamoDB table name and run it from your command prompt. You should be able to insert 10 items into your DynamoDB table and your Lambda function should have triggered 10 times. So I'm just going to copy my DynamoDB table name from here. Copy this code. Let us go ahead and paste it here. And what is going to happen is we are going to insert 10 items into our DynamoDB table and within a short while the streams will pick it up and trigger my lambda function. So let us go ahead and check whether all these 10 items have been inserted in our table now and you can see here I'm uploading three attributes that is my username and my timestamp and followed by a message which has a random variable that has been generated automatically for each item. So let us go ahead and refresh our table here. If there are multiple items totally we inserted one manually and there are 10 other items so totally we have 11 items and you can see here all the items are here so let us go to our lambda logs and see where all the items have triggered and there is some processing is happening on the background so i'm just going to screen here and you can see here there is a lot of uh, events that are happening if i go ahead and check some of them you can see here there is an user one and then there is an user two and it goes all the way to user 10. If all of them have triggered my processing, you can see here, it's all there. So that is how you create an event stream processor in your DynamoDB and do some downstream processing. Uh, since all of them are in a CloudFormation template, go ahead and try them. It should be very easy. And if there is any problems in doing this in your account, or if you have any problems in your enterprise environment, put them in the comment section or send us an email. I'm happy to help them with